Oakley hits the entertainment bullseye every week with her hard riding. Straight shooting. And suspense. Nearly. Nine more miles. Only nine more miles after we traveled a hundred in the past two days. Oh, look, Lossie. Here comes Doc Seymour. Yeah. Hello, oh, Annie and Lofty. Sure I'm glad to see you back. Did you see the governor? We sure did. And he accepted Judge Bourne's resignation. Effective tomorrow. Here. See for yourself. Generally, it takes weeks to find a successor. But you know Annie, Doc. She told the governor if he wasted even a day, she might be responsible for making Judge Bowen a widower. She's close to right, too. If the judge don't get his wife into another climate, well, she just won't last. Poor Jenny. She's a lot sicker than she lets on to the judge. Well, as soon as we get back to town, we'll let the judge know that his resignation's been accepted. Maybe he and Jenny can make arrangements to go to Arizona tomorrow. I sure am sorry for him. After all he's done for other folks, now when he needs it, there's blame little help left. Well, as you say, what she needs is to be in a sanitarium where she can get the proper care. Yes, and what the judge needs is the $2,000 to send her there. Well, I guess the best thing for us to do is to ride on back to town and tell him. You're right, and I'll tell Jenny the good news myself. Be like a tonic for her. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Good best. Good best. Say, Lofty, I was just thinking. If I ride over the canyon, I can go by school and see my little brother. That's a good idea. So Tag will be relieved to have his sister home again. Now he'll have someone to help him with the dishes. <laughs> see you, Annie. All right, Lucky. Lippy, you sure you know where that gold is hidden? You think I'd have killed my cellmate who told me and busted out of the pokey if I wasn't sure? It just so happens I'm financing this expedition. I got a right to ask questions and get answers. He's right, Lippy. This here's the fourth charge we've set off. I'm just as interested in that 40,000 down there as anybody. Now then, you got a match? We keep blasting and blasting. Somebody's gonna hear us.
never get that one for a long time, Lofty. There were two others. Who are they? I don't know. When we get this from the tower, maybe we can get them to talk. Come on. The nailed lippy. What if he gets tossed back in jail? How do we find that box of Wells Fargo gold? I don't know. But if they find out who he is and that he murdered his cellmate, he never will get out of there alive. We should have made him draw some map. I tried it a dozen times. One thing's certain, we'll have to get him out. That's real easy talk. I'm going to have a look at that jail. What? What if someone sees you? No doubt someone will. But this is a long ways from Colorado and the Barranca National Bank. You're taking a long chance. So do the boys that robbed Wells Fargo. And I aim to get my half of that 40000 You know where to meet me. I'll see you at sundown. So your name's John Smith. Just remember, there's not any Pocahontas around here to save your neck. Think it over, because we'll find out who you are sooner or later. I'm starting by sending a few telegrams and making a routine check. He's hiding something, Lofty. Either about himself or the two men he was with. Maybe both. Yeah, I guess so. Been a half an hour since Tag went for Judge Bowen. You know Tag. He probably went to the judges by way of the candy store. Thank you enough for getting my resignation accepted. Well, now you and Jenny can leave on that coach for Prescott tomorrow. Oh, no, we can't leave that soon. You've got a prisoner that has to be tried, you know. Well, the governor says your replacement will be here Monday. That's plenty soon enough for the trial. It's only a misdemeanor case, Judge. Why, his gun wasn't even fired. Now, be honest. Which is the most important? A prisoner that has to stay here for 60 to 90 days anyhow? Or your wife's health? You're right, Annie. Jenny must come first. If I only had the 2,000 to put her in a sanitarium. And she'd get well, and all our troubles would be over. Hi, Judge. Well, just who are you, sir? I came to see about your wife's health. Uh, a doctor? You could call it that. Sit down, sir. Judge? I'm going to see that you get $2,000 to put your wife in a sanitarium. Well, I don't understand. You, a total stranger. A stranger that doesn't like to see people worry. Now, you, you worry about your wife. Take someone else, a good friend of mine. He's worried because he's locked up in your jail down the street. What are you getting at? You try my friend, John Smith. Turn him loose. And $2,000 is all yours. Get out. Do you hear me? Get out of here. No, nah, no. Nah. No sense in making yourself sick, too, Judge. Look at it this way. He's not booked on a serious crime. It's a simple misdemeanor. He resisted arrest. Did he? Now, how did he know that fellow was a lawman? For all he knew, he could have been a road agent. Oh, no. Crime's a crime. The size of it has nothing to do with it. If your wife didn't get the proper care when she could have had it, Judge, that would be a real crime. I've resigned. Uh, there'll be a new judge here Monday. But as a matter of convenience, you'll try Smith tomorrow, won't you? Two days or 60, who'll know the difference in care? I'll know the difference. Sure, you'll know. You'll know your wife is provided for. There's 500. The rest of it tomorrow, after Smith walks out of your court a free man.
Is something wrong, Judge? That man in there, is he John Smith? That's the name he gave, yeah. Have him in court in the morning. I'll hold his trial at 9.30. 9.30? Prescott stage leaves at 8. If the judge wants to hold trial tomorrow morning, Lofty, I'm sure he must have a very good reason. Uh, exactly. Uh, Doc Seymour says uh, Jenny's too weak to move for a day or two. The Doc said that? Why, you left... No, no wonder you're so down in the dumps, Judge. And since you will be in town, it'd be foolish for you not to hold one last court session. I knew you'd understand, Annie. This is kind of throwing you a wide loop, but who knows what we might come up with. I understand how you feel, Judge, about not having enough money to send Jenny to a sanitarium. Here, take a look at these. These are posters of men that have rewards offered for them, from $500 to $5,000. We haven't seen any of them here in Diablo, so I thought you might run across some out in Arizona. Yes, uh, you never know, do you? It's just wishful thinking. You know, I think the best thing for you to do, Judge, is to go home to your wife and get some rest. You're right as always, Annie. Uh, see you at 9.30 in the morning in, in court. Yeah, sure, Judge. We'll be there. Annie, what do you make of that? The judge is up to something or... Annie, what's the matter? What's in your mind? Lofty, I know as well as you do that Doc Seymour left town till tomorrow. And I doubt if he told the judge that Jenny couldn't be moved. So? What's this? I don't know. At least not for sure, but... Well, I just think it might be a different kind of a doctor that convinced the judge he should stay over and hold court tomorrow. $3,000 reward for Amos Belcher. Wanted for embezzlement and bank robbery. Notify City Marshal Bronco, Colorado. Amos Belcher. I never heard of him. I sure hate to think what I'm thinking about Judge Bowen. You suppose this Belcher or someone's gotten to him? Well, something's happened, that's for sure. He seems so scared, so sort of... Lofty, do you know that man? Do you think he might be one of the two that got away? I never got close enough to take a good look. But even if it is, what's so important about John Smith to take a chance like this? Well, we've got all night to sleep on him. And so is the judge. If your wife can't get the proper care, that would be a problem. No one will know the difference or care. What's the difference two days in jail or 60? Just a matter of convenience. Your wife can't get the proper care. That would be a real crime. Now here, Jenny. Drink this milk. All of it. Ev. Ev, what's wrong? What's troubling you so? I told you before, nothing's worrying me. Don't try to fool me, Ev Bowen. You hardly slept a wink last night. You're just imagining things. That's what you're doing. After 39 years imagining things about you? No. I don't know what it is, but I know you got a problem. You're my problem. But that's not it. This is something different. Promise me one thing, one little thing. No matter what you do, Ev, don't do something you'd be ashamed of. You won't be ashamed of me, Jenny. I promise. I promise. Now go ahead and drink your milk like Doc Seymour says. Day after tomorrow, we'll be in Prescott, and you'll get the care you need in a sanitarium. That the judge, boss? That's him. Well, a couple hours from now, we ought to be back digging up that 40000 again. You seem mighty sure. Why not? If he was going to turn us down, he and his wife would have been on the Prescott stage, and that left at 8. Well, I guess you're right. Now we'd better be getting to town. Good oh, morning, Annie. Hey. Good morning, Lofty. All ready for court? Expecting a long trial, Annie? Taking your lunch to court? Scarcely, Lofty. But I must admit, it's food for thought. Now that you've had a chance to sleep on it, what do you think the judge will do? He'll do what's right, Lofty. He has to. Even if we have to give him some help. I'm helping too, Lofty. Annie and I are keeping our eyes peeled for that crooked banker they're looking for. And the other fella too. Okay, Mr. Detective. Let's start looking them over.
wait here. I'll be back after the trial. John Smith, charged with resisting arrest. Will the arresting officer please rise? Yes, Your Honor. Deputy, your complaint here says the prisoner resisted arrest. Did he know you were an officer? Did you tell him, call out to him? I'm wearing my badge, just like I am now. Anybody can see it. I didn't ask you for your conclusions. Did he say he saw it? No, of course not. Then if he didn't know who you were, how could he have been resisting arrest? I'd like an answer to that question. You see, Your Honor, even though Smith's gun wasn't fired, which we freely admit, the two men with him did shoot at me. We're not trying the two others. The question here is, since you didn't identify yourself, how do you know they didn't think that you were a road agent? Your Honor. Annie, your uncle's deputy is testifying, not you. I know that, Judge. But I'm asking for permission to appear here as what lawyers call a friend of the court. You know, Judge, there are laws and laws. And it seems to me the case being tried here calls for an application of some laws that some of us sometimes overlook. You'll find it all right here, Your Honor, in the very book you used 24 years ago when you took the oath as judge. If your wife can't get the proper care, that would be a crime. Would you take a look at the book, Your Honor? Will the prisoner rise? Your name, John Smith? I don't believe that's your name any more than I believe you didn't know this man was a law officer. Besides, no one is threatening or trying to bribe this court, which I want to say here and now, some unprincipled crook did. Smith, or whatever your real name is, you know it and I know it. You're as guilty as sin. Therefore, this court finds you guilty as charged and wishes it could uncover the many other things that must be against you. I'm sentencing you to 120 days in jail. All right, deputy, lock him up. Judge.
Belcher's not hiding around here, Tag. This is where he came. He can't be far away. <laughs> I figured you'd show up. Yeah, we were all expecting you, Belcher. Being smart isn't going to help you much now, Deputy. Take the cuffs off of him. It took so long, Lofty, but they had a third one on the roof across the street to cover them. What did they say, Annie? Better late than never. Lock them up. Well, that makes three of a kind. And although it's not according to Hoyle, this three of a kind gives the Diablo jail a full house. <laughs> yeah. Just think, tomorrow this time we'll be in Prescott. Thanks to Annie. No, thanks to you, Judge. You did the hard work all by yourself. I suppose it was my idea to send this telegram to the marshal in Colorado, giving the number of those bills Belcher tried to bribe me with. Well, I guess not. I think that was an idea of Providence. Anyhow, the important thing is that the reward money paid for the sanitarium. The really important thing is what you did, Andy, when you walked down that island court. You helped my husband find something he almost lost. 